Hey folks, what's up? Gray here, and welcome to the Sunday Shift Report. Basically, the crap has hit the fan. Stuff that might be in the news that, or not be in the news uh, that you might not be aware of. And folks, we're, today we're going to focus on a topic that some of you folks are very familiar with. And uh, that is, uh, a lot of you folks have heard the term Agenda 2030. Now that encompasses a lot of different things. Uh, what I want to look at is what we're seeing in today's uh economic market in regards to food. And I know we're a bit redundant sometimes here uh, in the aspect of, uh, you know, food, food, food. But, you know, as I always say, certain things that you need to live uh, is important and stuff like this you should be aware of, especially being uh, folks in the emergency preparedness community. Now, I do want to address one other thing before I get too far into this is, uh, folks, look, I think your time, your time to come across my content as well as other people's content is valuable. So I think sometimes folks need to uh, evaluate uh, the content that you're watching. Do you find the information helpful? Do you find the information useful in your daily lives? Do you feel that the information is going to be informative informative enough and, edu and have the education behind it? And what I mean by that is research behind it to uh, make you better aware of the situations that are arising around uh, the U.S. and across the globe, uh, being that we have folks that watch my channel uh, from everywhere and all walks of different lives. Uh, so please, folks, um, there's a lot of things out there, uh, and I'm not trying to call out any specific individuals or nothing like that, that are going to lead you down a path uh, that's probably not going to be something that you should be concerning yourself with in regards to useless information. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, any type of uh, what we see on the news and what we see across uh, many social media platforms is the bickering, the arguing, the confrontation, uh, confrontation and, and the drama uh, where certain channels have just gone off the deep end in regards to uh, that's what they consist of. Uh, so please, folks, to me personally, I value my viewers time. And I, and I always wish to give you the best information that I can come across that might be beneficial to you, uh, as well as to myself and my family and folks that I care for. Uh, and this is why I share the information that I do. Uh, so that being said, it's 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 not a poke at any one individual. It's not a poke at any individual channel. Um, it's just something that you should be aware of no matter where you get your information from, be it periodicals, be it mainstream media, be it uh, YouTube, be it, you know, Twitch uh, bit shoot, rumble, and other places like that. And I always employ every single one of you folks, please, just because I show you an article on here, I, I, I always would love for you folks to go a little bit further with it uh, and follow it with some further research on it because I can be wrong. I'm only human and mistakes will be made. And uh, plus, like I said, when I go over stuff like this, this is my interpretation of what I'm reading uh, and the way I digest this information and the way I choose to share this information with you. Um, I just like to be honest about that uh, because what's the sense? Without honesty and, and some sort of uh, transparency, uh, what's the sense in that point? Uh, I don't want to, uh, like I said, my goal is never to push uh, a specific agenda or fear uh, down someone's throat and say this is what it is uh, and so on and so forth. I just want to educate you folks so that you guys are aware that you guys can make better decisions uh, in your prepping, uh, you know, your prepping lifestyle and, and, and how you uh, perceive things. Hopefully that makes sense to a lot of you folks out there. I just wanted to get out that the way. I've just seen a lot of things floating around, uh, social media and, and different forums and places like Reddit and stuff like that. And I just see a lot of things that are deterring folks or either taking up, uh, what's I want to say, take up too much space in your mind outside of what's really important uh, and that is being prepared uh, for what is coming down the pipe, be it whatever it may be, uh, be it something as simple as a loss of a job or, or something far, far worse. Anyways, uh, let's get this show started. Uh, th these, some of these articles are going to be long, but they're very imperative to to uh, to grasp and understand what's happening and why it's happening uh, in regards to the food crisis. You know, some folks, like I said, I, I get it. Some folks don't see it as much as some of the other folks do. Uh, but we have to look at it uh, with a with a wide mindset. And what I mean by that is when you look at something and someone explains to you, hey, I'm living in, let's say I'm going to use Wisconsin for an example, and I don't see chicken uh, or the cost of eggs or milk or bread has gone up this much. Uh, and then you'll have someone else say, well, I live in, 
I don't know, New York City, and I don't see the same thing. Uh, so you got to be wrong. You have to look at the big picture, folks. Some folks are going to have uh, a lot more surplus uh, in inventory versus others. Uh, please just be uh, open-minded when it comes to this stuff. And uh, and like I said, you might want to further it up and talk to other folks that you uh, are friends with. You know, what are they seeing? And that's that's wholeheartedly why I'm always pushing the Discord because a lot of people conversate and share pictures, videos, content, information like that in regards to what they're seeing in their town, their city, their state, and so on. Uh, and everyone's free to voice their opinion in the aspect of, of course, as long as it adheres to certain specific guidelines because we can't. Uh, I, I never like the fact when people bully people uh, or anything like that. You know what I mean? We're here as a community to have discussions. Uh, and not everyone will agree. But when you approach your conversation, the best way to do that conversation is do it intelligently uh, and uh, just share ideas and your thoughts. Um, I get them all the time. Sometimes things I read are someone will send me an email that's ridiculous. I get it. That's their opinion and they're entitled to it. Uh, that's why we love this country, right? That's why we love America is because we are allowed to have our opinions and voice these opinions, at least currently and for now. <laughs> Anyways, let me go ahead and stop rambling on and get into the Sunday Shift Report. Uh, this is going to be specifically geared towards Agenda 2030 and what we're seeing, and then we're going to jump into some other uh, information uh, that was brought to my attention. And at the end of this, I have two other things that I want to share with you uh, in regards to a, the, the health crisis and how how you've been lied to, how uh, things are starting to get more uh, visible uh, and people are starting to speak out. Even people that you don't think are speaking out or maybe they don't intentionally mean to do it, but the information is finally coming out, which I said back uh, in 2020 or 2020, whenever I started this channel and we started having these conversations that would uh, some of these things would come to fruition and you'll see the truth. Uh, and there's probably so much more to come. Anyways, let me bring up the first article here, folks. Um, as you can see here, uh, what do I got for you? This is uh, Alex Newman. Uh, and I do have some of these. I have this article and a couple other articles linked down below in the description if you care to read these articles in their entirety outside of my own interpretation and how I view this. But you might want to check it out yourself. Uh, so I did link some of these articles down below for you to read. All right. So uh, this is uh, by Alex Newman. He explains the United Nations Agenda 2030 uh, behind farming restrictions. Uh, and we've heard a lot of farmers, they're screaming at the top of their lungs. And there's a lot of people that are not listening to those folks. Those folks uh, provide the food that you consume, provide the food that you see outside of all the imports that we have here in the U.S. It says the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development informs the government politics to restrict farming and transform the food systems in different parts of the world, said Alex Newman, an award-winning international journalist who has covered this issue for over a decade, folks. He has been watching and learning and researching this issue for over a decade, so I value his information. The 2030 Agenda is a plan of action devised by the United Nations to achieve 17 Sustainable Development Goals. They call it the SDG. The goals of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development uh, were adopted by all UN member states in 2015. Uh, you can go on Google or whatever platform you choose to you look that up and you can find out who these UN members are. And of course, we are part of this organization in regards to we have a say here in America. Um, so like I said, it's a global situation. It says, then Secretary General of the UN, Ban Ki-moon, called the 2030 Agenda the Global Declaration of Interdependence. Uh, Newman said in uh, in a recent interview on the Epoch's TV show Crossroads program, some of you folks may be subscribed to the Epoch Times uh, and may be able to catch these shows and whatnot. They're very interesting. I like to he have, I, I call it second or third party media, uh, because they're, sometimes they're not as, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, narrative based in regards to, they're just there to try to inform people uh, in regards to what's going on behind the scenes. Uh like I said, that's that's my opinion. Anyways, it says, in my opinion, this is Alex's opinion, in my opinion, it was a direct swipe at our Declaration of Independence. So instead of being independent nations, we will now be interdependent. And like I said, trying to make that one world government. Uh, that's, you know, their goal. One, one, uh, one world currency, one world government, all that fun stuff like that. Anyways, the 2030 agenda covers every element of human life, uh, not just the food. 
every element of your life. Every element of the economy, including global wealth redistribution, not only within the nations, but also among the nations, Newman commented. The agenda specifically says that we need to change the way we consume and produce goods, he added. Specifically, I'm talking about food. Goal number two on 2030 agendas deals specifically with food, Newman said. This should be a wake-up call to a lot of the folks that still may not have uh, may not believe, have any belief in this whole food crisis, food shortage, and the cost of food increase moving into 2022 and 2020 uh, all the way to 2020 all the way to 2030. My apologies. Anyways, uh, back in uh, it says and back in September of 2021, the UN held the Food System Summit which emphasized the need to leverage the power of our food systems. Think about that, to leverage the power of food systems. What have I always said in the past? If you control the food, you control the people. For the purpose of achieving all 17 sustainable development goals by 2030, according to the UN statement. So this is not something that's hidden. It's not something that I'm just making up. The UN specifically has made this statement with their agenda 2030. Uh, and I know folks like to say, you know, you, you folks out there that preach this stuff, you guys are wearing it 20, uh, 2030. Yeah, we're wearing a 2030 tinfoil hat, all right. Uh, but yes, uh, you know, we're conspiratorial and stuff like that. I don't feel that, folks. I honestly don't. This is this is black and white, per se. Anyways, this is everyone everywhere must take action and work together to transform the way the world produces, consumes, and thinks about food, the statement said. Everyone. Everyone needs to do this. Hmm. <laughs> That means every every government, every entity, and so on and so forth. Bring the second part of this article up. Taking over farmlands. We've seen a lot of this happen lately, from the Chinese buying farmlands to Bill Gates buying farmlands, uh, and the list goes on to our own government buying out farmlands uh, for their own specific purported agenda. It says the sustainable development agenda emerged in 1970s. So this hasn't started. This has been something that's planned for quite some time, folks. When the United Nations tried to define it in a conference in Vancouver, Canada in 1976, Newman said, the conference, which was the first UN conference of human settlements known as Habitat, I think it says Habitat 1, adopted the Vancouver Declaration, a report that provided recommendations for UN member states. This is why we see a lot of things that transpire in Canada, and specifically why, uh, you know, the tyrant Trudeau is who he is and is doing what he is doing to a lot of his citizens. Uh, and like I said, that's uh, for another video, right? Anyways, Newman quoted in an excerpt, uh, expert, an excerpt <laughs> from this report, land cannot be treated as an ordinary asset controlled by individuals, so you as an individual should not be able to control it as an asset. And is subject to the pressures and uh, efficiencies of the market. Private land ownership is also a principal instrument of accumulation and concentration of wealth, therefore contributes to social injustice. You guys have heard that term being tossed around for the last couple of years as well. Social injustice it means if you have too much farmland, uh, you're a bad person. That's my interpretation. Anyways, Newman said that, in this view, the UN ultimately wants to get rid of private land ownership. For you folks out there that own your own little farms uh, and own your little piece of land, they want to get rid of that, folks. They want to get rid of that. Anyways, he thinks that the uh, let me see where was I at? Sorry. Uh, we see all uh, we see this all over the world. This is not just happening in the Netherlands. Uh, which we've seen that whole situation arise with the farmers and whatnot as of lately. He thinks that war is taking place against farmers and ranchers, especially those who are independent or those who are not part of the system. Uh, basically, the major corporations that have the land and, and produce food and do what they want to do. Uh, but anyways, they want to remove small farmers, even medium-sized farmers, from their land, and they want to bring it all under the control of these, I think there is no other term to describe it, fascist public private partnerships and you know i always wonder if people actually know what fascism means uh the term fascism because people use it uh not in a correct sense specifically out there in portland oregon when they say fascist maybe they think they understand the whole fascism thing maybe i'm wrong but that maybe that's their their interpretation of fascism 
Anyways, let me con continue. It says, Newman noted that some examples uh, to illustrate his opinion, the Chinese regime foresees peasants to move to megacities. Uh, you know, you always wondered what those big, huge megacities in China are. They're all empty. Uh, is that the plan? Is that the plan to move all the people from the rural areas and the farmlands into these big, empty megacities? Good question, right? Farmers are killed in South Africa, and uh, Securities Exchange Commission in the United States proposed a new rule that could bankrupt small and medium farmers. So you see this happening uh, in China, you see this happening in South Africa, and then you see it happening here in the good old U.S. of A. The American Farm Bureau Federation said in a statement that proposed uh, a rule that could create sustainable cost for farmers because they do not have teams of compliance officers or attorneys like large corporations. It's all about the money. Moreover, it may push out businesses, uh, businesses small and medium-sized farmers, and force food processing companies to look for agricultural raw products outside of the United States, the statement asserted. So not looking within our own state or our own country for food, but to look out outside. So when you go to your store and you look at those fresh blueberries, or as they state fresh blueberries, where do you usually see on the label? Uh, a lot of these labels will state things like from uh, Chile, uh, from Argentina. You go to buy some fish at the store, not from your local market, but a you know major chain supplier, you know, like uh, Walmart or places like that. Um, and it'll state something to the extent this is from you know, Vietnam, or this is from some other place outside of the U.S. When I know right outside, maybe 15 minutes away from me, there's a vast ocean that we could be pulling fish from that should be here in my local stores, but it's not. Anyways, uh, so that's one aspect of it, taking over farmlands. And, and, and folks, we've, we've covered small and different parts of this art, these articles already, but this is kind of wrapping it into the one inside of the Agenda 2030. Let's bring up the third part of this article. Centralizing the food supply. Quite intriguing statement when you look at that. Centralizing the food supply. That means you're putting the food in one spot. Everywhere else there'll be no food if you have a centralized food supply system. This is, again, my opinion. If you control the food supply, you control everything, Newman said. You control everything. And now I can uh, expand on this. If you control energy... You can control almost everything as well. If you control the oil, the flow, the 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 <laughs> what I like to call the blood of the world, uh, it keeps economies going. Uh, oil. If you control oil, you have a lot of power. But if you control food, you control everything. One of the things that the communists love to do is create scarcity and create dependence. Scarcity and dependence, a.k.a. dependency on the government. As long as you have independent people who are able to take care of themselves, prefer, let's say for us, uh, an example is us preppers, uh, there really is no need for the government to run your life and to control everything that you do. Americans are a good example. Uh, Newman continued, as long as the food production is widely di di diffused and it's in the hands of the independent producers, it becomes very difficult to get people to bend to your will. So basically in that statement, he's stating that um, being the way we are, our society is today, um, we have a lot more free will and free choice to do the things that we want to do. We don't have to bend uh, a knee to the government saying you have to do this for now. The whole idea of using food as a weapon has been a hallmark of communist regimes for over a hundred years, Newman explained. It's also been a hallmark of the very same people who are openly promoting a UN Agenda 2030, the Sustainable Development Goals, and even the World Economic Forum. For example, the Chinese regime and the mega corporations formed a public-private partnership to centralize control of the food supply, Newman said. It's similar to what occurred in Nazi Germany. Uh, where on uh, paper private companies, yeah, where on paper private companies own the businesses and, obsess and ostensibly manage their businesses, but ultimately the private companies will be taking their orders mm -hmm. from the government. So it looks like on paper that you own this and that you run this, but you truly don't. The government runs it. The bigwigs, the elites, the people that control other folks' lives. 
In the United States, uh, ESG metrics are used to uh, hijack control of business sectors of the individual companies and put them in the service of the goals of what I call the predator class. Uh, speaking of classes, classes of citizens. Again, I can refer back to my community tab, that video that Rudy did, uh, Alaska Prepper. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Um, the people behind the World Economic Forum, a.k.a. the predator class, uh, and the United Nations. So you have the WEF and the United Nations, a.k.a. the predator the predator class. Newman said ESG stands for Environmental, Social, and Governance Criteria that are used to evaluate companies on how compliant they are with sustainability. How compliant they are. These are some keywords that you have to factor in and, and pay attention to. You got to pull these keywords out and understand uh, the way they're being used. Compliance. Uh, ever watched the movie 1984? Just saying. It's a movie, but you get what I'm saying. The food supply centralization is just one component of their agenda, but is a very critical one, which, along with energy and other things, allows them to control humanity, he added in this article. Allows them to control humanity, folks. Mm -hmm. Do you see... I hope that you guys uh, are <laughs> awake and seeing what's happening not only here in the U.S., but across the world. When I read this stuff, it, it's very scary for to, to digest it and see that this is going behind uh, closed doors and all these meetings and things like that. And some of it's being publicized, but most folks don't pay attention. Most folks don't care. Most folks live their daily lives. They wake up. They do their thing. They go to work. They pay the high prices, and they move on and do it the next day. And they coast on through life because it's just so easy to do that without being in the know. I found it to be a very intriguing article, and that's why I linked it down below. Uh, if you care to read it in its entirety or maybe even save it and look it over and share it with other folks. Um, matter of fact, I'll, I'll also link it in the Discord. Uh, I'll put that in the important news section for you folks to read that are part of my Discord, which has grown tremendously. Thank you all for being there. Uh, and sharing your ideas from gardening uh, to news to, uh, you know, meetups and to all kinds of different stuff. I, I really enjoy cruising through the Discord myself as a lurker. Uh, I don't interact as much as I should just because I'm a very busy person with my real life. Uh, and I'm saying that this is not my real life, but you know what I mean. We have our priorities, and my priorities is my family uh, and the well-being of them. Uh, that's That comes first, beyond anything, family first. And don't get me wrong, folks. You're part of my family, and that's why I'm here doing this stuff, uh, informing you and, and trying to educate you guys on things that are happening and, you know, trying to spread this message of preparedness. Anyways, um, what I wanted to do is also look at, let's look at fertilizer. We've been talking about the fertilizer shortage uh, and all that stuff like that. So why is it? Why is there a fertilizer shortage? Um, and again, why was there so many fertilizer plants either bombed, uh, caught fire, uh, being put out of commission, uh, lots of weird stuff, just like food distribution centers and all that stuff like that that you've been seeing happening. A lot of people just keep on saying, oh, well, that just that just happens. It happens every year, Gray. Uh, you're, you're not really, <laughs> you're, you're misleading people. I'm like, after all the research I've done, it's, it's not an every year thing. There's a few here and there, but not as many as they've had been lately from, uh, you know, from train derailments, uh, with food, uh, the <laughs> food distribution centers, and, and the list goes on. Uh, but now the fertilizer situation. Let's bring up good old Tyrant Trudeau. Let's bring that up on the screen. Uh, and thank you, uh, uh, my mod. You know who you are. I don't know if you want uh, information, uh, if you want to be announced on here or not. But I figured thank you. I want to say thank you for bringing some of this stuff to my attention so that I can include this in this uh, Sunday shift report. It says Tyron Trudeau moves forward with plan to reduce fertilizer use and bankrupt farmers during global food shortage emergency. So he's aware that there's a global food shortage emergency, emergency uh, and he wants to bankrupt his farmers in Canada. Anyways, uh, he wants to reduce Canadian fertilizer use and bankrupt his farmers. This will bankrupt farmers. Their land will be scooped up by international billionaires and the global food shortages will deepen. 
will further be exacerbated. As per Government of Saskatchewan news release, both the Alberta and Saskatchewan Ministers of Agriculture have expressed profound disappointment in Trudeau's decision to attempt to reduce nitrogen emissions from fertilizer. This goes back to the whole Green New Deal, a.k.a. Build Back Better. It's all the same agenda, folks. It says, we really are concerned with this arbitrary goal. Saskatchewan Minister of Agriculture David Merritt told, uh, said, a Trudeau, uh, said the Trudeau government has apparently moved on uh, from their attack on the oil and gas industry and set their sights on the Saskatchewan farmers. Crazy. Oil and gas. Uh, and that goes to the thumbnail. Do you see that thumbnail? That's here in America, folks. People are selling the things in their house for food and gas. Is that the future of this country? Anyways, uh, this has been the most expensive crop anyone has put in following a very difficult year on the prairies, Alberta Minister of Agriculture uh, Nate Horner said. The world is looking for Canada to increase production and be a solution to global food shortages. The federal government needs to dis, uh, display that they understand this and they owe it to our producers. Remember that uh, little thing that I showed you? I think uh, I think uh, Rudy did it too. I, I know some of us have put this out where it showed uh, Russia and China. Uh, their wheat uh, is doing well. They're producing lots of food for their people, uh, possibly for other folks. I don't know. There's a lot of weird stuff going on. Of course, you saw uh, Putin and well, Russia sign that treaty. And then, of course, the port of Odessa was decimated shortly after the signing of that agreement. Uh, the Russians said we have nothing to do with it. Uh, it could be a false flag. It could just be a way to make the Russians look worse, or it could be factual. You know, uh, it's hard to tell this day and age. Anyways, as previously reported, the counter signal in December 2020, the Trudeau government unveiled their new climate plan, which focused on reducing nitri nitrogen oxide emissions from fertilizer by 30% below 2020 levels by 2020. 30. The plan is now coming into effect. Though the government refuses to acknowledge that nitrous oxide emissions can be reduced without reducing fertilizer use uh, because that doesn't play a part in their narrative. That doesn't play a part in their agenda. They want to go with that because that's you need, a lot of farmers need fertilizer to produce crops and large yields. Anyways, and indeed, according to a report from Fertilizer Canada, total emissions reduction puts a cap on the total emissions allowable from fertilizers at 30% below 2020 levels. As the yield of Canadian crops is directly linked to proper fertilizer application, this creates a ceiling on Canadian agriculture uh, productively well below 2020 levels. It's estimated at 30% absolute emissions reductions for a farmer with 1,000 acres of canola and 1,000 acres of wheat stands to have their profit reduced by approximately 38000 to 40000 We'll, say, we'll just say from 38000 to almost $41,000 annually. That's a huge chunk of these folks' income. Some may not continue. Uh, as you see how it all plays in together. Speaking of uh, China and Russia and all those folks out there, let's talk about China. We saw what India did. And India said that we, we're not going to export wheat and stuff like that as well because they need it for their country. So a lot of countries are closing off their exports because they're trying to feed their own countries because there's a massive food crisis around the globe. Uh, and if you look at everything else, the droughts, the heat waves, the shortages, the supply chains from train to uh, to the farmers to uh, the trucking industry, and the list just goes on, folks. It's a huge, huge chunk of our world that's being obliterated right in front of our eyes, and people are still asleep. But let's bring up China. China takes steps to slow phosphate exports. So <laughs> they're trying. And remember, folks, Russia is a huge exporter, and so is Belarus. And it's in this article. That's why I have it highlighted in red or underlined of fertilizers. But they're being sanctioned. So none of that stuff's going to come out to the Western uh, Western countries. Anyways, it says uh, Beijing, China. China is rolling out a quota system to limit exports of phosphate, a key fertilizer ingredient in the second half of this year, analysts said, citing information from the country's major phosphate producers. Ah, uh, man. The quotas set below, uh, the quotas set well below a year ago, 
a year ago's export levels would expand China's intervention in the market to keep a lid on domestic prices and protect food security while global fertilizer prices are near record highs. Last October, China also moved to curb exports by introducing a new requirement for inspections uh, for inspection certificates to ship fertilizer and related materials contributing to a tight global supply. So they're tightening uh, ways to control their fertilizer exports. Anyways, fertilizer prices have been buoyed uh, by sanctions on major producers, aka Belarus and Russia, while surging grain prices are boosting demand for phosphate and other crop nutrients uh, from farmers around the world. China is the world's biggest Again, China is the world's biggest phosphate exporter. And then when you wrap in Belarus and Russia, you can see how this is uh, shaping up to be one hell of a situation. Anyways, uh, back to what I was saying. China is the world's biggest phosphate exporter, shipping to, uh, shipping 10 million tons last year, or about 30% of total world trade. That's world trade, folks. Those are big numbers. Its top buyers uh, were in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, according, uh, according to Chinese customs data. Now, folks, uh, there's an article out there uh, that I was going to bring up, but I just, you know, time is always an issue. Uh, but China and Russia are creating their own, let's say, their own, not say not their own currency, but their own system, basically to dismantle the American power of the dollar being the reserve currency. So China and Russia are working on it. And these are two major superpowers. Uh, no matter how you look at it, no matter how strong you think America is and how strong you might think the dollar is, uh, this is their goal. And if you look at uh, commodities exchange in regards to money and stuff like that, you're going to see some noticeable differences. Things are turning for the worse. The tides are turning, as they like to say. Anyways, China appears to have issued export quotas for slightly more than 3 million tons of phosphate to producers for the second half of this year, said Gavin Zhu, Chinese, uh, China fertilizer analyst for the CRU group, citing information from about a dozen producers who have been informed by local governments since late June. That would mark a 45% drop from China's shipments of 5.5 million tons in the same period a year ago. That is a lot of fertilizer, folks. Again, when you put all this together, this creates a huge critical system on the fertilizer supply not only will there be less of it remember there's a whole the supply and demand thing you know you probably learned that in high school at least i would hope i don't know if they still teach that so the demand is still going to be high the supply is going to be limited and the cost is going to be uh, extremely high so in that situation the farmers that do have access to this or major corporations if they get rid of the small and medium-sized farms and it's just these major corporations running these farms they can they can go beyond whatever prices that they want to go if they want to have a loaf of bread cost ten dollars that's what they can choose to do so and unfortunately you as an american uh would either pay it or go without or go without so folks i hope that you folks are Taking this stuff serious uh, and stacking stacking food as much as you can. Be it stuff like your canned goods, freeze-dried foods, and learning other techniques in gardening and, and stuff like that. And the gardening has been rough, folks. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, hopefully I'll get a chance to do a garden update. Uh, with this heat, uh, there, there's a lot of major heat issues uh, arise from, uh, let me see, east of the Mississippi. Uh, and there's some stuff going on out west, too. There's, they're not you know exempt from it. Uh, but places that haven't seen temperatures... Uh, not even only in the U.S., but across the globe, uh, is decimating uh, a lot of crops. And it's even created me a lot of issues here uh, in my garden with some of the things that I'm growing, specifically the tomatoes and stuff like that. Other things that are heat tolerant, which I, I, I employ all of you, if you live in a hot spot or a hot place that, you know, just it's always hot and humid in the sun, or maybe if not, maybe you want to experiment with some of these things. Uh, and you have the capability to grow stuff like sweet potatoes and okra and peppers and stuff like that. I focus a lot on sweet potatoes just because it's a very nutrient-dense food and uh, it's easy to grow and uh, it can give you nutrients and, you know, kind of carve uh, that hunger pain if you were going through that situation. Remember, folks, uh, there's a lot of things that has to do with the spuds. And what I mean by spuds is the potatoes, but I'm pretty sure most of you folks are aware of that. All right, so some of you folks that may have seen some of my content uh, last week when I was talking about uh, this product. If you haven't seen that video yet, let me reach over here. Uh, that has to do uh, with the uh, the purple pitcher plant and a basically 
the monkey that's on everybody's back and everybody's mind lately. So let's go ahead and bring this article up. I'm changing over now. These last two articles are going to have to deal with the health crisis and things that we're seeing and some of the lies that you're being told. Hopefully you're being informed uh, about this. Maybe you're already aware, but I wanted to bring this to your attention before we wrap this up. So let's go ahead and bring this up. And remember the WHO just announced, was it the other day or something like that? Uh, they've put the monkey uh, in the same place they put the Charlie Victor. And you folks know why I don't go full on it and say the specific types of, uh, as what you see on the screen versus what I'm saying. I use this to try to smooth things over per se with the uh, the powers that be. And I hate being, what's the word, you know, uh, I can't think of it at the time, but at this moment. But uh, you know, when you're trying to explain something, but you're not, but you're trying to not say it specifically. Anyways, let me just get into the article. It says top uh, WHO officials conceded that everyone who gets the monkey, uh, uh, the monkey Victor. Now uh, that's what we're going to call it. Uh, I could call it Michael Victor, but I figure monkey Victor. You guys will get what I'm talking about. Is essentially part of a clinical trial to collect information on whether it is effective. So if you're out there getting uh, the monkey the monkey Victor, <laughs> it's going to be a hard one, the monkey Victor, uh, you're in a clinical trial. You know what I mean? Uh, they're trying to gather information on whether the shot is effective. Again, and it's an, I don't want to say EUA because that could be misinforming you, but that's what they're doing. They're, they're creating these sites. You've seen them in New York pop up. They have sites out there now that you can go and get the monkey victor if that's what you choose to do so. Um, but yeah, clinical trial. Uh, the comments came as the agency's director, General Teodoros, Teodor, uh, and I can't even pronounce his last name, overruled a WHO advisor panel that declared uh, the monkey a global health emergency, which the agency's highest level alert. The last time the WHO issued such an emergency was in early 2020 when it made the same declaration for the previous health crisis or the current health crisis because, as they say, uh, the BA5 or whatever um, is making a massive comeback, uh, as, of course, you guys – and I don't need to talk about it. I'm pretty sure you've seen it all over mainstream. You've seen the memes. You've seen it on Twitter. You've seen it on every platform there is at Corn Pop. Being uh, – having this twice and being double uh, turbo boosted <laughs> uh, has come down with the Charlie Victor. Man, uh, it goes to show no matter who you are uh, and no matter what you do and what you preach, you're still vulnerable to the narrative that you uh, spread across uh, the airways, per se. Anyways, Tim Nugent, uh, head of the WHO's Infectious Hazard Preparedness Agency, uh, said that the monkey, Victor, uh, efficacy isn't known. It isn't known because it hasn't been used on a large scale before. I would like to underline one thing that is very important to the WHO. We do not have uncertainly uncertainty around the effectiveness of these victors because they haven't been used in this context and in this scale before, uh, Nyujin said Saturday. Nyujin then said, uh, when these uh, victors are being delivered, uh, that they are delivered in the context of clinical trial studies and prospectively collecting this data to increase our understanding of the effectiveness of these victors. Clinical style, <laughs> you're basically, you're a test subject, folks. You're a test subject. Uh, and they, they're they hoping that a lot of folks will come and do it and uh, so they can gather more information. Now, I get the science. I, I understand things need to be tested. But the problem is, is, my problem is, is, there should be, you know, with something like this, you figure this, this should have been already been tested over the last however many long many years as this has been around. Uh, someone tried to explain to me, and I, I understood what they were saying, that, look, man, I understand what you're saying, uh, but they have to do stuff like this to get information, to get data, to get data. Well, here's my answer to that. I don't want to be one of those subjects uh, for the government to get data. I'd rather not. Um, I'd rather take my risks with Mother Nature. And that's my preference as a free American. Anyways, I wanted to throw that out there. And then we're going to wrap this up with this article here. 
And uh, if you guys have, I mean, uh, I know I, uh, I don't know, I'll probably throw it on the screen a couple of times, but if you guys are getting any value out of this, I appreciate, um, you know, if you want to drop a comment, if you want to share this out, or if you'd like to give it a thumbs up, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you don't like what I'm saying, go ahead and you can thumbs it down. That's your choice. You have that freedom. Right now you do. Anyways, uh, a lot of you know who Dr. Bricks is. She was standing up there. It was Dr. Bricks and Dr. Fauci that were uh, standing up there next to Trump uh, back in his administration. Uh, and she wrote a book. She wrote a book that's been uh, a lot of people have been talking about because of what she said in that book. So again, to the powers that be that are maybe watching me and trying to analyze what I'm saying, these are excerpts from her book. This is not me saying anything or giving any misguided information. This is from uh, someone who works for the government and who wrote a book. This is her words, not mine. Anyways, two of America's most prominent public health officials, from Charlie Victor Response Coordinator Dr. Deborah Burks, <coughs> excuse me, folks, and the head of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, Dr. Anthony Fauci, made media appearances this week that addressed the Charlie Victor rollout. On Friday, Dr. Bricks confessed that U.S. health officials overplayed the Victor on Fox News, uh, Your World with Neil Cavado. I knew these uh, Victors were not going to protect against infection, Bricks said. But she told the sitting president that it would. She told the American people that it would. Both of them. Uh, this is what they've been pushing, still pushing. Uh, whatever, what was that guy that was up there uh, uh, when uh, Corn Pop got infected? He was up there having a conversation with the other lady, the press secretary, and his whole spiel was to go get victored. Anyways, uh, <laughs> crazy. And I think we overplayed the victor, she added. And it made people then worry that it's not going to protect against severe disease and hospitalization. As explained in the commentary on Twitter, Dr. Brick's subsequent admission uh, that 50% of those uh, who uh, passed away via the big O were older and victored. And they still passed away, folks. Almost certainly suggest data fraud. They don't like to hear that. They don't like to hear the word fraud unless it's in their favor. But yes, almost certainly suggests data fraud. The numbers were skewed. We all said this over a year ago, that the numbers were BS. Here we are, the person behind those numbers is, is laying out there for you to see. Yes, data fraud. Because the victors failed to lower excess mortality in 2021, there is also cause to question their purported efficacy. Um, but to this day, they want you to get your children, Victor. Anyways, Dr. Uh, Bricks recently admitted to fudging data while she was working in the Trump administration. So she admitted it. She fudged information. She made up stuff. If you watch, if you, if you read her book, or if you, if you look at the expert excerpts from her book, she said, basically, the uh, 15 days, the slow, that was made up. Uh, the six feet, that was made up. The use of these things, that was made up. And uh, what was the other thing? Uh, there's a few other things that she said. They, they just pulled numbers out of thin air, and it sounded good to them. And that's what they told the American people. So, folks, a lot of you folks that have been on this uh, back and forth, not knowing, uh, you know, the facts... Here it is. They lied to you. And they're continuing to lie to you. This is why, folks, I employ every single one of you to stay informed and educated. But focus on what's more important. What you can control, which is you and your family. You control uh, what you do with your life. And you control the direction of your life. Um, so focus on that, folks. But here it is. They lied to you. I told you, folks, that the media... And politicians will continue to lie to you. Uh, that's what they do, and that's what they do best. Other than that, folks, let's go ahead and wrap up the Sunday Shift Report. I appreciate every single one of you being here. Uh, I appreciate it on the way out if you hit that thumbs up button if you can. That's very appreciative. I know I've been repetitive with it over the last few minutes, but 
it helps. It does help to get this message out, and I, I truly appreciate that and all your support. Uh, all you mods, thank you for all your support uh, and your continued support uh, in all these different videos and live streams that I do, being there, helping out, and making everything run smoothly. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Other than that, folks, like I said, please, please be safe out there, and remember you're not alone. This is Gray Man. I'm out. I'll see you guys in a rebound. God bless.